God prods our hearing. Yes. The activity of God stretches our seeing. Together they invite us down into the waters of life where the Spirit flows. From there we may rise to go, to dare, to walk, and to serve beyond where we have been before. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Florence United Methodist Church here in Florence, Oregon. Uh, my name is Pastor Logan McClay Strike, and I'm so thrilled to be in worship with you on this special Sunday. It is um, the time after Christmas, a time after Epiphany, and it's also a special Sunday, uh, Baptism of Our Lord. We'll, we'll hear Susie read of Jesus' baptism by John. But apart from that, we got lots going on in our community. We are welcoming our new member, Susie stevens Briotti later in the service. We are welcoming our new leadership board um, and affirming them as they go, and also saying goodbye to past leaders. But most importantly, we are celebrating the retirement of Linda Yoder. So this is a special day for us, and it's also a sad day for many of us too, because we're aware of how much Linda has done for all of us. So. So um, stick around after worship. We have a fellowship hour hosted by Women of United Women in Faith. Um, and also just time to celebrate Linda's retirement. So come um, bring your words of um, joy and all that sending forth into um, her next steps. And um, there will be time in the service for that as well. So with that, let's center ourselves in worship with a moment of silence and then prayer. Gracious God, we know that we have come this far by faith. As we continue to enter into this wild month of January and with all the hopes and fears and dreams for 2023, we ask that you would guide us. We use this time, this place right now as we present ourselves in worship to center ourselves in you so that we may be restored, renewed, and sent forth from this place at the end of our worship to do good and to love others and to act justly. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
All right, our first song uh, is Ferris Lord Jesus 189 in your hymnals. 189, and it will be on your screen as well. Today is a significant day for many reasons. We, of course, celebrate Linda Yoder and her retirement. We offer our official welcome to Susie as a member of our local church here today. We recognize leaders of the past years. We welcome the new governing board for the coming year. Yippee! Hooray! <laughs> Donna taught me that. Yippee! Today also feels like an anniversary of sorts for me, oddly enough, as I was appointed by your bishop to serve as your pastor starting January 1st. And my first sermon was set for this Sunday in the church calendar, Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. But that's not all. While I was in seminary, one of the first paid gigs I had 
was to preach at a local Methodist church on which Sunday? This Sunday, that's the baptism of our Lord Sunday. So this feels like a momentous day in all sorts of ways. This day holds memories, gratitudes, but also a remembrance of our baptism. I like to say that baptism is a grace for our living. It's a reminder of God's promise to us as we go about our daily lives. It's a reminder that we are children of God, that God values us and holds us close as beloved. We are loved by God. But we say that we are loved by God so often, we say, God is love, God is love, that we forget how profound this love is. God's love is so deep, so wide, that our response, even our worship, our prayers, anything, is like a drop in the ocean compared to what God is giving us. So we need remind, reminders like our baptism to tell our forgetful hearts that God's love remains as strong as ever, no matter what. Especially those times when we are noticing that we are imperfect people in, in an imperfect world. I think this is an especially important message for our incoming and outgoing leaders today. Because we honor and acknowledge you as ministers of the church today. Ministers. Yes, each and every one of you, even if you don't hold a leadership position, you are a servant of the church. You are a servant of God. So if you need a reminder, Diane McCalma puts that on the newsletter, at that opening page, each month. <laughs> and that's also why I prefer the title pastor, because I too am a minister. Um, but we all are servants of God. We are all equal in God's eyes. So leaders, ministers, you have a heart of faith and particular skills to do good in God's name. You are so, so much appreciated. You are loved and you should be proud of all that you've done this past year and the years before. But I'm sure that amidst this truth, you have moments of regrets. Perhaps you wish you could have seen a particular task happen before you left your position. Or maybe you had a certain goal in mind for the church. It's only human that we set our goals and then God kind of messes it all up and gives us different blessings than we hoped for. <laughs> Each of us need to remember that it's not all up to us. God is active in the world, not only through us and the plans that we make together. God is active. God is at work. And affirming our baptism, so this day where we will do that, helps us to believe that again. Remember that love of God that carries us. So it's funny that um, we, imperfect people, also perfectly love, loved, need something like baptism to remember our need for God. But why would Jesus approach John for his baptism of repentance? For us mere mortals, baptism allows us to recognize and live in this par paradox of being both sinner and saint at the same time. And we use water as a tangible sign of God's promise to us. Water is the stuff of life that's around us all the time. We can't live without it. Whenever we use water, we are given an opportunity to remember a grace given. And this is precisely why baptism is a, pub, a very puzzling choice for Jesus, because he has no need to repent. He has not sinned. He's also not a saint because he's the son of God, <laughs> son of man. So why would Jesus need to be baptized? So I couldn't help but get a little nerdy this week, y'all. Um, not all Gospels tell the same stories. Um, but often they do align. They just say it in different ways. Kind of like us. We tell the gospel in our, own, in our own bodies, in our own way. But this one is told in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Susie read from Matthew today. And Jesus' baptism by John is presented in nearly all the same ways in each of those gospels. But Matthew is the only one that presents it just a little bit differently. For example, in the gospels Mark and Luke... A voice from heaven, we're going to assume God, right? <laughs> it 
uh, addresses Jesus directly saying, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. It's as if everyone else that's gathered there that day is eavesdropping on this conversation between a father and a son. But in Matthew, God turns and makes an announcement. This is my son, with whom I am well pleased. Instead of talking to Jesus, God is talking to all of those gathered there and saying, hey, this is my son. This is someone that's different. This is the Messiah. So it's a difference, but it matters. It's like God revel, reveals and revels in this special identity in Jesus at this moment, whereas the other Gospels has a father God bursting with pride over his son. And in all Gospels, God proclaims Jesus as beloved. Beloved, just as we are. But again, this still doesn't answer our question. <laughs> Why baptism? Why not have God speak from the heavens at a different moment in time? John's baptism was a call to repentance, basically a turning around and walking a different way, a preparatory step in restoring the relationship with God. In other words, you come to the waters to get righteous again. Jesus approached John for baptism so that he might live in solidarity with the imperfect people he had come to save, to be identified with them. And that's what's profound to me about Jesus' baptism God is with us all the way. Jesus is humble enough to be associated with broken, missing-the-mark sort of people. But beyond that, Jesus was human. So human that he had a mark. <coughs> he paid taxes, even if he didn't like what Rome was doing with it. He lived under a government that didn't do right by the people. He was a man of faith. He was Jewish. He knew the Torah, the law, <coughs> and he had conflict as well. He was betrayed by a close friend. Even the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is willing to live like we did, suffer like we did. So much so that he would come to the water. We live within such a complex society where not one of us can make a perfectly good or a right ethical choice. We are caught up in a system of sin and brokenness. And so was Jesus. He lived in a world that longed for renewal, just as we did today, do today. And yet he is active, he is here, transforming the world that he is in solidarity with. Jesus is with us all the way, and he isn't done with us yet. And for that, we give our thanks and our praise. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our song will be uh, another familiar one. I'm enjoying hearing the harmonies, whoever's harmonizing out there. It sounds pretty good. Uh, Psalm 57, O for a thousand tongues to sing. Number 57 in your hymnal.
Okay, so let us turn our attention to the font and remember our baptisms. Sisters and brothers in Christ, my siblings, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon water. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive it. Water from the streams of God saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today we come to the waters to renew our commitments in each other's presence to Christ who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who is making all things new. And so I ask you, members of Florence United Methodist Church, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? We renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, we reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of our sins. Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to that power that be? We accept the freedom and power God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are and in all that you do? We will remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? We affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, and in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, the life you birthed in us by baptism into Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails. Your mercy is everlasting. Your healing river flows. Your spirit flows where you will. We cannot stop you, God. But sometimes we try. We try to block the flow. We redirect the winds of the spirit or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound, and we forget its power. We part ourselves. We, we are, are dry and thirsty, O oh God. Come and refresh us. I invite you now to extend your hands towards the front, uh, towards the front, towards the font, <laughs> excuse me. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Christ. Let these waters make us long for your coming reign. Most holy God, Abba Father, glory to you. Jesus Christ, Savior Lord, Glory, Glory to you. Spirit of fire, spirit over the water, spirit of holiness. Glory, Glory to you. Eternal God, one in three and three in one. All, All glory is yours, now and forever. Amen. And if those words weren't enough, here's the best. Those, oh, thank you. That would be great, actually. <laughs> Remember your baptism. Woo we're all getting a shower. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I'm not going to miss you guys. <laughs> we are renewed, we are stored, we are divinely washed, we are divinely blessed.
Amen. Amen. Yippee. Yippee. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. <laughs> I think I need one extra arm, maybe. Yes. That would be perfect. Okay. Now we um, turn to song before we pray together. So, Sharon, take us away with Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Um, it's you... Um, it's in your hymnal 334. Issues. Well, that was the plan, but we both tested positive for COVID, so she she is. I'm testing negative. She is still testing positive. Oh, we so both have very light cases. Okay. So that's my prayer. That's my prayer of thanks. Mm -hmm. But she's not gone yet. So she's, oh, okay. She's here. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we'll pray for her continued healing. Yes. Well, she's fine. We both thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we will pray that the, the viral shedding stops and it goes away. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Karen Bayless texted me last night to ask for special prayers for her, her daughter, and her granddaughter. There's just some family conflict right now, so let's pray for um, God's guidance for all of them. Um, and Diane's husband, Patrick's cousin, is my cousin. Oh, your cousin. My cousin's husband. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> a dear person to Diane, cousin's husband, is is um, ill and can use our prayers. What is his name? Dave. Dave. Let's pray for Dave. And of course, let's offer our thanksgiving for, for Linda and for the leaders outgoing and for Susie. So other than that, for what or for whom shall we pray? Prayers for Bob and Jean Tefke, who are both feeling a little under the weather today. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For our daughter Carrie, she's coming to have a workation with us, and she's flying into Eugene tonight. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Prayers of comfort for my coworker Rashida and her family um, as they celebrate the passing of her father this past week. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. To the people of Ukraine, God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For my brother and sister that had COVID before Thanksgiving and they just keep getting one thing after another since then. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. For the men and women in the military.
military and those who wait for them at home, may they come home safe and soon. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our dysfunctioning uh, Congress, please help them to start working together. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those people who are having to contend with far more water than they anticipated when they are getting <coughs> water to ease their drought down in California and across the country. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the homeless in our community and those who battle addiction and mental health issues. God in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. <coughs> God, we give thanks this Sunday for the gift of water in all its forms. Bless your creation that you have so lovingly made. Open our eyes to see how we can better attend to it and to one another. We lift up prayers of thanksgiving for leaders, young and old. Continue to stir up your spirit in this place, God, and um, help us on our way. We give special thanks and praise for Linda Yoder and all the hard work she did for us in the office and the ways that she has given her, of herself and love to this community. We thank, for, thank you for the joyful gift of Susie. And we thank you for this new year um, to enter in with new goals and new dreams. Dwell with us, God, as we, as we um, seek to, to serve you and seek to worship you rightly. We pray this in your name. Amen. Now is the momentous time where we will do all the blessing. <laughs> so I'm going to welcome Susie up first. Say hi, Susie. <laughs> If you don't know Susie already, you should. She is an active uh, member of the Florence community, very joyously justice warrior out there. I feel like I'm always oh, seeing you involved in different things, but you've helped with free lunch. Um, you're always giving these little candy sweets to people as you go. And um, behind the mask, um, you can, her eyes give it away. She has a lovely smile. So um, we're so thrilled that you... <laughs> Sneak peek. Uh, we're so thrilled that you have been worshiping with us and have been so part of this community, and we're thrilled to officially welcome you as a member. So oh, thank you. And yes. Thank everybody for making me feel so welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's pray over Susie and give thanks for her. Almighty God, by the love of Jesus Christ, you draw people to yourself and welcome them, welcome them into the household of faith claiming them as your children. May we show your joy as we welcome our sister Susie. Keep all of us here that worship at Florence United Methodist Church close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and prayers, and in service to others as we follow your, the example of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, now I'm going to ask for um, leaders that are stepping down from leadership positions to stand up. So if you were serving on council and you are no longer, I would like you to stand. And I'm just going to call you by name now. Kathy Bones, okay. <laughs> wonderful note taker. Cindy Hughes, who was our inter interim um, council president. Diane McCalmont <laughs> was our faithful council president. I was so thankful for you when I transitioned on. And of course for Patty, our SPRC chair, and for Pat Rollins, our lay leader. Um, and Bert, who continues to lead our adult Sunday school and, and all that. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> You're pointing. Chair. Yeah. 
Aaron? Um, I was uh, I was honoring council members specifically, but we Sharon is our wonderful musician, <laughs> as always. <laughs> Am I standing over? Okay. And I'm going to ask the new governing board to lead, uh, to stand and be recognized. So that should be Jim, that should be Amanda, that should be Kathy Ellie, that should be Scott, Terry, Amanda, Renee. Renee. <laughs> Thank you. These are your new leaders um, for the coming year. So um, Kathy Yelly is not a lay leader, she's our council president. So the way that this new governing board is going to work is if you've got a concern, and there'll, there'll be more to come, but if you've got a concern, these are the people you talk to. Kathy Yelly is our, the head of this council for this year, um, and I, of course, am, will continue to lead as your pastor. So let's give them a special round of applause. All right, you may be seated. Okay, well... Jim. We're going to pray over all y'all. So I'm going to ask each of you to put a hand on your heart, actually. Because, as I said in my sermon, each of us are all ministers, yes? We are all leaders in this church in different ways. Because even as I'm recognizing council members outgoing, there's a ton of other ministries going on in this church that we're not on that board. So Jean Heftier, membership secretary, I'm thinking of Rosie um, leading the knitting group. I'm thinking of United Women in Faith, Free Lunch. Wow, all ministers. So let's pray. We thank you, God, for brave and believing people who planted your message in this church. We praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who worked in them to gather and give orders to this community and those who still sustain it. Remembering all those that have gone before us, we pray that we may follow as they follow, in the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 And now is the time for us to welcome up Linda Yoder. <laughs> Yay! Yay! She's normally in the back, making sure that the camera is perfectly zoomed and <laughs> behind, the scenes, all the behind the scenes all the time. And this is a moment for you to receive all these words of appreciation. And you'll notice that Diane put together fun <laughs> photos of you over the years. So um, I would like to just take a second to um, allow people to speak words of blessings for you as you go. So um, I, for one, have seen you use all of your talents, all of your skills, all of your power to do good for this church, and I thank you for that. Um, I thank you for that. Um, and now we'll take a few minutes for, for volunteers. If you want to say a word, I'll just ask that you speak into the microphone, so I'll be coming to you. Okay, Amanda's got it first. <laughs> Okay, forgive me, my um, mythology might be wrong, but isn't the phoenix the one that rises out of the ashes? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, Linda, our phoenix, when the church was shut down, when uncertainty was surrounding and encompassing us, you were this beautiful bird ascending with all of these ideas and all of these abilities that none of us had. And the positive push for us to continue worshiping together, even when we could not be together. And so I will forever be grateful and thankful that in that moment of the whole world stopping, you rose up and met the moment and kept us worshiping together. And I will always always remember how you just brought us all together. Singing, worshiping, reading, <laughs> learning, and growing. So thank you for thank you for all of those 
countless hours that you gave to us so we could be together. Thank you. Can I see a hand up here? I'm going to go to Judy first, then. Well, I don't know what United Methodist Women or Women of Faith now would have done without Linda. Every time we needed her, she was there for us. Even at the last minute, and I'm kind of a last minute person. So thank you, Linda, from all of us. We really, truly appreciate it. I have to second uh, that wonderful. Um, By Amanda. Yes, that that wonderful image that Amanda presented to us, and also Judy. Um, the position of administrative assistant is, uh, I think, particularly in a church, it's not just about the pastor and keeping the office running. It's really about keeping the whole church as a community running. And Linda always uh, dug right in and, and did that with grace and humor. And I'm particularly thankful for the fact that um, <clears throat> I became the church treasurer shortly before the pandemic began. And we weren't allowed in the office, except, you know, rarely, one at a time. And Linda was very instrumental in keeping me on track by um, you know, answering my questions, scanning in financial documents so that I could work from home. And I'm just really grateful. Plus, you know, when I came in, we had a great time just kind of talking about what was up. And thank you so much for everything that you did, Linda, for our community of faith, but also for me personally. Okay, I got one more from Kathy Bones. Thank you. Well, about a gazillion years ago, we started small groups in church, and Linda was our leader. And today, I believe we're the only group still functioning. And that was like over 10, 10 12 years ago, something like that. Although we do meet online because two of our ladies are in Texas and California. <laughs> But we still meet in our soul groups, we call it. And it was really great. And I can't let this moment go by to say, I love singing with, with Linda all in the choir all these years. She's a hoot. <laughs> okay, and SPRC Jim has something. SPRC Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it probably didn't get past your attention that there were envelopes circling over the last <laughs> uh, So uh, this is actually a fairly fat envelope. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, you, you can open it later. And, you know, um, just in, ca in case you're like me, it's like, well, thanks for one thing, but money would be really be nice. <laughs> I'm just teasing, but you know what? Uh, the reason people gave generously to, to the, that part of the envelope is because it really represents them and their feelings. So um, take this as for what it is. It's not just monetary. It's really people giving from their heart in thanks for you. So thank you. There will be more to come over there after this. <laughs> so, so, okay. Prepare yourself. Can I ask you to stay up, Jim? Oh, okay. Okay, so we are actually here. No, this needs to go off. Okay. Let's pray over Linda, and if you wouldn't mind putting a hand on her on behalf of the whole church. <coughs> Loving God, we thank you for Linda and for our shared life together in this community of faith. Linda has blessed us, and so we in turn ask that you shower blessing, blessings upon her as we send her forth into retirement. Guide her day by day by day, give her what she needs, and keep her friends close to cheer her along her way. We ask this through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, let's give a round of applause for Linda.
And as Jim said, there's more to come, good food, and I have one more surprise for with us, so. Ooh, I love to tantalize. Okay, now we turn in my little helpful binder here to the piece. <laughs> uh, because COVID is kind of circling around and other journey things, I'm just going to ask that you stand where you're at and just give an enthusiastic peace in the name of Christ to your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> So I will invite you to find your seats, and I'll invite our usher up for our time of offering. Um, we gather what God has first given to us, and we will bless it together at the table.
what you bring to our service together is um, hard to describe, but the gift of music that you yes. bring is wonderful. So yeah. thank you and a little bit. another word about Sharon. Um, I made an announcement I think in April, end of April maybe, or early June, May. Um, Sharon has been giving her time as our pianist for free. We used to pay her, but she said, please don't pay me, this is my gift to the church. So it truly is such a gift to all of us, and you do such a wonderful job. So thank you. Um, so we have a reception, prayer shawl ministry, Wednesday, January 11th. Um, and then a quick check-in with Bert is, are the men's group gathering this coming Thursday? Uh, no? Yes. yes? Okay. All right. Um, directory update. So we are, uh, Linda has created this beautiful directory. We're just doing some final last minute edits to make sure it's as few typos as possible. So stay tuned. It will be printed in January and I'll need help folding and all that. So you could help with that, stay tuned for volunteer opportunities. And then one more um, announcement from Terry, just on behalf of the uh, keys. We've had some issues with keys, but also with leadership transition. That means that if you're no longer um, holding a position where you need a key, you need to return it. So do you mind just saying a word about the keys? Yes. Uh, uh, like Pastor Logan said, if you have uh, uh, you were in a position of leadership in the past and uh, you have keys, uh, please see me to return the keys. Um, if you still need the keys, we will make that determination when you bring them in. Uh, also, if you need keys as a new member of the uh, uh, leadership uh, committees and stuff, then again, see me and we'll see if we can't get you taken care of. Could you also say a word about key replication? Oh, yes. Um, and say more about what you... Yeah, yeah. We, we have noticed that uh, uh, there have been some copies made of the, some of the keys. And, you know, they do say on the keys, do not duplicate. Um, if, uh, if you have a key that is obviously not one of ours, that has the stamp on it, uh, it's a square key, um, uh, please uh, see me again, and, and those need to be turned in. We, uh, we, we need to control, we need to know who has keys. And, and so uh, uh, we have no idea who has copies. Uh, there were not supposed to be any copies made, um, but uh, sometimes people make them anyway. Yeah, so I'll just say, you know, just think about your own personal house. You don't want 50 people having a key to your house. It's kind of true, especially for the office, because we keep sensitive information in there. Um, so if you happen to lose a key or you need to get into the sanctuary, I would just say be in contact with Terry. Let him know what your concerns are. And also, if you lose it, you know, there's grace, okay? So don't, don't take someone else's key and make a copy because you're trying to fix something. It, it just ends up making it more confusing for us to understand what's going on in the building. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think that's it. So again, if there's another announcement that I missed, um, please grab me after this so that we can make sure that community knows. Because I'm always missing something, y'all. You know that at <laughs> this point. Okay. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Now our sending song is the Spirit Song, 347 in your hymnal. <coughs>
Go forth in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.